All right, so to start uh, with this, the first thing you want to do is draw the graph that shows the chocolate market. You start with the horizontal axis and vertical axis. The horizontal, excuse me, the vertical axis measures the price of the good. The horizontal axis measures quantity per period of time. The higher the price, the more chocolate firms will want to sell. So the supply curve has a positive slope. The higher the price, the less chocolate people will want to buy. So the demand curve's got a negative slope. And the equilibrium price quantity combination is determined by the intersection of the supply and the demand curves. If the price was higher than this price, what would happen? It wouldn't be equal. What would happen if the price were higher than PE? Surplus, and the surplus would force the price back down to PE. And if the price was less than PE, there'd be a shortage, and the shortage would make the price rise until it got back to PE. PE is the equilibrium price. All right, so for A, what happens? There is a increase in the price of cocoa, which is used to make chocolate. So is this going to change the supply of chocolate or the demand for the chocolate? It's a change of supply because it affects what it costs to make the chocolate. It's the price of a resource. The price of the resource went up. And again, this graph shows the market for chocolate. So supply is going to, what did we say, decrease, which means the curve is going to shift in which direction? Left. To the left. So what I need to do now is draw a supply curve to the left of the original supply curve showing the effect of the higher resource price. Once that supply curve shifts to the left, equilibrium point moves from where it was originally, point A, to the new intersection of the supply and demand curves, point B, and at point B, we can label that price as P2, and the corresponding quantity is Q2. So, is that price higher or lower than what it was originally? P2 is higher than PE, therefore we would conclude the price is going to go up. Quantity, what happens to the quantity of chocolate sold? Q2 compared to QE, Q2 is lower, so the quantity of chocolate sold in the market will be less. And the revenues of the chocolate producers, will they be higher or lower? Question mark, because revenue, remember, is the price times the quantity. So if the price is up, that would make revenues higher. But if the quantity is down, that would make revenues lower. Unless we know the size of these changes, we cannot predict what will happen to revenues. Revenues might be higher, lower, or the same as before. Not possible to determine. Questions? You know, I'm just going to throw this out there. You couldn't see, if you didn't want the red background, why did you write in red right there? Oh, oh I'm not going to. Oh, I thought you were going to I'm not going to erase it and do it again. I'm just going to move to here. So I'm going to let Mr. Swain take over. <clears throat> there you go, sir. <clears throat> that wasn't good plenty on my part, so you're right. <clears throat> All right, so B says the prices of taffy, hard candy, and other non-chocolate sweets increase. Again, the starting point is the graph that shows the supply and the demand. So we draw the vertical axis that measures the price, the horizontal axis that measures the quantity. Is it still recording? Yeah. <laughs> we are recording this time? Yeah. Why demand in the market for chocolate? Equilibrium quantity, equilibrium price. So what will change in the market for chocolate if non-chocolate sweets go up in price? There'll be a change in the demand. The demand for chocolate will change. And if these other things are more expensive, will the demand for chocolate go up or go down? Demand for chocolate increases, and we show that by shifting the demand curve in which direction? To the right. To the right for an increase. The increased demand for chocolate means that 
the quantity sold is going to go up. Q2, this is a bigger number than QE. The price of chocolate is going to go up. So chocolate will be more expensive, more of it will be sold. And since the price and the quantity are both increasing, we can predict what happens to revenues. Revenues will go up. Since revenue is P times Q, and both of those numbers are bigger. So that would be the change in the chocolate market for part B, where the price of some substitutes went up. <clears throat> Any questions? Thank you very much. You're my cinematographer now. Okay. You don't get an extra pay for this one. <clears throat> Uh, so what's going on with number three? Is the graph in my, uh, yeah. Yeah? Price, quantity, three. Uh, more, f more firms? More firms producing chocolate. So there's the supply of chocolate before, and there's the demand for chocolate before. That's the equilibrium quantity. That's the equilibrium price to start with. Then, more firms are going to start making chocolate. If there's more firms in the chocolate market, what changes in my chocolate market? Supply or demand? Supply. supply. The number of firms is a variable that affects the supply. So if there's more firms, the supply is going to increase, correct? And when the supply increases, I shift the supply curve up, right? Always have to think of these curves shifting right and left, not up and down. So an increase in supply is a shift to the right of the supply curve. There's a shift to the right of the supply curve. The equilibrium point is going to move from point A to point B. At point B, the price is higher or lower. Price is lower, P2 is below PE, the quantity is higher, Q2 is farther to the right than QE, and since the price and the quantity are changing in opposite directions, it's not possible to predict what happens to revenue. And so that's what your graph should look like for C, where there's more firms. And now we are at D, and at D, what happens? D is a change in income. Right. So when the income changes, we need to make an assumption about what kind of a good we're talking about. The good could be a normal good, or the good could be an inferior good. What kind of a good do you think chocolate is? Superior. Normal or inferior? For most people, I would say chocolate's probably a normal good. So if we assume chocolate's a normal good and people have more income, what's going to change in the chocolate market? The demand is going to change and the demand is going to increase. Now it seems like we had a graph a minute ago that showed a demand increase, didn't we? This is the graph from part B. It showed an increased demand. This increased demand was caused by the fact that the price of substitutes went up, but an increase in income would have the same effect, increasing the demand. And so you would expect higher quantities, higher prices, higher revenues in the chocolate market. <clears throat> so same graph for part B as for part D. What if you wanted to assume chocolate was an inferior good? Which way would the demand curve shift if chocolate was an inferior good and people have more income? Well, it'd go the opposite direction and price quantities and revenues would go down. If you wanted to make the assumption that chocolate was an inferior good, if you specify that assumption and then shift the demand curve to the left, that would be fine. I would I disagree with your assumption that it's an inferior good, but if you make that assumption and then you analyze based on it, as long as you analyze correctly, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Thank you. Now you're in charge. 
All right, so the last graph, uh, E. We have two things going on here, quantity and price. Quantity per time period. There's a supply curve and there's a demand curve. Again, this is the market for chocolate. <coughs> QE is the equilibrium quantity. PE is the equilibrium price to start with. Is that graph on the in the image there? Yes. Sweet. <coughs> All right. So what happens in E? What changes? Number of firms increases, and when the number of firms increased, that was a previous question. From more firms, the supply increased. So my supply curve here is going to shift to the right because more firms are selling chocolate. What was the other change? Consumer incomes goes up. That was part D, and more income, if it's a normal good, means more demand for chocolate. <clears throat> so the demand for chocolate is going to increase from the original black D to the blue D2. So as I've drawn the graph, the equilibrium point would go from my point A to my point B. And the price is going to go up. And the quantity is going to go up. And the revenues are going to go up. Anybody see a problem with that? I hope somebody sees a problem with that. Some of my conclusions are based on the way I happen to arbitrarily draw the diagram. In particular, I shifted the demand curve by a lot and didn't shift the supply curve by very much at all. And that's why my price went up. If instead I had shifted the demand curve by not very much and the supply curve I shifted a lot more, well, in that case, the price would be less. And since we don't know which curve shifted by the most, we really can't say for sure whether the price of chocolate would go up or go down in this instance. So the price of chocolate could be higher or lower or the same as before. It depends on the size of the shifts in the supply and the demand curves. What about the quantity of chocolate sold? Will that rise or fall? <coughs> Quantity is going to go up, and it doesn't matter which curve shifts by more. The increase in supply leads to a higher quantity. The increase in demand leads to a higher quantity. When they both happen, quantity will rise by a lot. What about the revenues of the chocolate producers? Since we're not sure what happens to price, it's possible that the price could go down, in which case the combination of a lower price and a higher quantity would make the revenue change indeterminate. Question. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm, look, I'm looking at you. You look like you were about to ask a question. So, on your test, you will have to do some questions like this. There will be some sort of a scenario where you have to draw the graph, shift the curves around, figure out what happens to price, quantity, and revenue in the market. Yes, sir. So, uh, 